I'm sure you're all familiar with the story. A friend of a friend of a brother of a cousin of a friend says, Oh, sure, I know someone who's a photographer. They'll come over and take some photos of the band. No problem whatsoever. And so you get out there on a Sunday afternoon and take a few shots of the local band and get them back to the desktop and you start to have a look at them and there's some problems. Uh, people are blinking. People aren't looking in the same direction, pulling funny faces, but luckily you were smart enough to take several images of each setup, and you can see three of them here, so these are images of a local band called the Lion Island, and let's see how we can use one of the cool photo merge features in order to get the best parts of these three different images and stitch them together seamlessly. So the first thing I'm going to do is you'll notice that these are all part of an image stack and uh, the originals are ARWs which are raw files so I've just converted them across to JPEG just so uh, the demonstration will be a little quicker but remember you can always grab the raw originals and use those as well. So let's grab all three images and we can either open them directly into Photoshop Elements or we can even go up to File, down to New and across to photo merge group shot and we'll select that you'll see that the elements editor space opens up all three images will open up as well and they'll be actually placed in the project bin at the bottom of the screen automatically the feature tries to align the background layers and tries to match up the common elements in each of the photos now with these particular photos we're lucky because even though I shot them without a tripod, that is I shot them handheld with just holding the camera, notice that the background is the same in all the photos. Let's just open up the project bin here and you'll see that the background is the same in all the photos. And If I just click through you'll see them sitting here. But as I click through notice that there are some images where some of the band members are looking good, others where they're not looking too great. So we're inside the Photo Merge Group Shot workspace now. We've got some instructions over on the right hand side and we've got two main areas to work here. And the first thing we need to do is drag across one of our candidate photos and elect to use it as a base image. I'm going to drag this one across and just drop it over here and use it as the base for our pictures. Then I'm going to add different heads I guess or different band members to this photo in order to make a better composition. So on the left hand side we have a pane called the source pane. So what we need to do now is go through and find another source and I quite like what's happening with this guy here. He's got quite an interesting look on his face and I think it's probably better than what we've got going on over here. So we just need to go over to the right hand side of the workspace and select the pencil tool and then go and just scribble over the top of this particular part of the photo and automatically it will snap across to our final image. Now you'll notice that it's done this very, very much seamlessly. You'll notice that the legs are still the same in the base image and haven't been dragged across. If we want to include more of this character in the final image, well then we can just drag down and scribble across the bottom and you'll see that now we have the legs from this photo as well across on this particular background image. You'll notice I'm not actually making this painting very specific or very detailed. I'm just scribbling over the bits that I want and the photo merge group shot feature is so smart that it can actually go ahead and find the best bits and throw it across so that it merges very well. Now you'll also notice that this character's got his eyes shut so we'll just go over here and I'm just going to grab this part of his head here, paint in that and automatically that's transferred across seamlessly. It's like magic. Let's go to another one of the source photos and we'll use that for for grabbing and adjusting the middle band member. Flick that across, now he's got his eyes open. The girl at the back left has got her eyes shut as well so let's just use her photo from this source as well and you'll see that it's pushed across. Now I think that everybody's looking pretty cool and we've got a great shot based on the three individual photos that we started with. But let's delve a little deeper and see how this system works. You notice that we've got a, an eraser tool here as well and using this eraser tool we can select that and go back and just erase for instance if we don't want 
the girl on the top left included in the photo, we can just select that and use the eraser tool to erase the pencil marks that we've already drawn onto the source and automatically our adjustment has been taken away from our final image. We also have the ability to show regions. When I started working with the feature I made sure the show strokes option was turned on. That means I can see where I'm painting on the source photo and isolating the parts that I wish to drag across. Notice over here when I actually click on show regions that on the final photo now you can see some coloured regions. There's yellow for the guy in the centre. That equates to the pencil yellow pencil marks that I've got in the source on the left which then equates to the yellow highlighted thumbnail at the bottom in the project bin. So this helps you identify where you're actually drawing parts of the image from in the final image. So having show regions on is a great way for you to, to determine which parts of the photo are being drawn from which source images. So you notice we've actually got a part of the leg here coming from the blue source. So if I wanted to adjust that I could select the eraser tool, I could then select blue as my source and then erase part of what we've scribbled on here and that will make a change to what's going on over on the right hand side. So you can see now that leg is no longer being drawn from the blue source photo. There's also a bunch of advanced options that we can see at the base here but I'm just going to click done for the moment so you can see the result back in the editor space. So Photoshop Elements goes and combines those images and then displays the final photo in the main editor space. Here we have it here and if I just look at my layers palette over on the right hand side you'll see that we actually have two layers the original background that we selected as the base image and then the upper layer which has got our changes in it so if I hide and show the upper layer you will see the changes that we've made in the image for me to complete this photo now it's just a matter of coming in and I'll do a little bit of cropping just to make it a little bit more interesting and in this case what I'd also do is probably come back through and use the spot healing brush set to the new content aware option. You can see it there in the options bar. Grab a larger brush size using the right hand square bracket and just brush over the area that we wish to get rid of that handrail that's sitting there. So we can use the content aware to help us do that. You can see it's rebuilding some of the grass detail. If at all that doesn't work we can always come back through and use the clone stamp tool to actually make those corrections. So there we have the basics done. Now what if we have a situation where we need a little more help when we're working with the photo merge group feature. Let's have a look at that. I'm just going to delete this image, go back to our original three photos. Let's open up the project bin. You can see here they are. Let's imagine that instead of using the same exposure, which I was careful to do when I shot these three images, we actually had something that was much darker uh, as one of our source photos. So I'm going to go to uh, Enhance and then down to Adjust Lighting and across to Levels and I'll just make this image artificially darker and then show you what we can do in order to do some correcting. So I'm going to click OK. So let's just imagine for a minute that one of the exposures wasn't quite matched with the others. So if I flick through the images, you will see that the other images are much lighter than the one that I've just corrected. We still want to use those photos for a photo merge group shot project. So we'll go up to File, down to New, across to Photo Merge Group Shot. This time, because we're working from the main editor space, we want to click Open All, or you notice that you can actually con control click any of the images that you have in the project bin and make a selection from those. Up to 10 photos you can actually work with at a time in the photo merge group shot feature. I'm just going to click open all in this instance. So we use the same three photos that we used last time. So here we are back in the photo merge group shot workspace. I'm going to select the green image, drag it across and use it as our final photo. That's the one that we used last time. And I'm going to go through and grab a couple of parts from our yellow source photo. So maybe the center here, as we did last time. That's looking good. 
But this time when I go to the blue source photo, you'll notice that the images here are quite dark. So when I grab this particular photo picture here, or this particular person, and have it brought across, and this one over here on the left, and have it brought across as well, we have some problems. Because you can see that the source image is much darker than the base image. Well, that's where some of our advanced options come into play. If I just go and select Pixel Blending, watch what happens in our preview. Automatically, Photoshop Elements knows that the source image is darker, and it tries to even out the exposure difference or even out the tonal difference using Pixel Blending. Now, an, an alternative approach would be for you to try and adjust all of your source photos so that they're round about the same exposure values or the same brightness before you bring them into the photo merge group shot feature. But pixel blending is a great way of blending different parts of photos where there's just slight differences in exposure. The other option in the advanced section is the ability to align our photos if they haven't been automatically aligned when first entering the workspace. You can do that by clicking and dragging these three reference points to key parts of the image. So here I'm going to select key parts of the image that are common in all three and don't pick something that's going to move. So don't try and reference something like one of the people in the photo because they might actually move between each of the shots. Then go over to the base and go and use exactly the same markers to actually set and select the same parts in the background, the parts that don't move. And Once you've got it set up, you can click Align Photos and automatically Photoshop Elements will go ahead and align the photos based on those selected parts.